Good evening, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Casual Report. Episode 138, I think. Um, who's counting? I should be, really. Um, you are. Yeah. Hey, mate. Uh, joined by Jam today. We're Jam's in the house, joining us. Um, James, you are, without doubt, the reason I'm getting recommendations of Thomas the Tank Engine video games on my YouTube. Um... <laughs> No, thank you for that. But how are you today? Uh, yeah, I'm chilling. Chilling. Um, what have you been up to for the last 48 hours or so? Uh, yesterday, I played off. I played off. Yeah. <laughs> is, is it still, is it good? Uh, quite fun. Fun. Buzzing. How's Rocket League? Just chill, just the same. Just Rocket League is Rocket League. <laughs> you watched out. <coughs> uh, I was in Borderlands. I today finished episode six. Briefly remind me without spoiling too much. What? What about? They're about to play a game at the beach. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But good. That's cool. Um. Those that don't know, go and watch it. Those that know, know. Um. How are you? F it, pre it, it gets better, doesn't it? Oh, it's Borderlands. It, it, gets... it, it, does, it does get better. Because um, the, the first episode's like, what are you talking about? I mean, I'd like to say I wish I saw that before Squid Game. Mm -hmm. Squid Game oh. ruined it, to be honest. Yeah, I'm not the. I was Borderlands on Mad Mm hmm, yeah. It's Squid Game. It's, it's so, so good. good. Um, yeah, I wish I watched that first. I didn't know, I didn't know it existed before. Hmm. Yeah. But um, it, it, it's not. It doesn't. I know it's like a game thing, but it doesn't like pirate or rip off what uh, Squid Game does, which I like, which I yeah. thought it would, but it's not, so it's pretty cool. No, yeah. I think it's based on a. It's either a book or a manga it, or it is a, a book, graphic yeah. novel or something. It's based on something which. Mm -hmm. Preempt Squid Game, but Squid Game obviously been in the pipeline for like eleven years or so. Yeah. Um. Wasn't James. Mm -hmm. What have you been doing? I've been chill, mate. I just, I just been working, playing Metro of Dread, and I watched Bake Off last night. I got a text about watching Bake Off last night. Why? Laura. Why? Why not? No Bake Off is. I can't. Remember. I can't remember what, what I was told. Oh, yeah, she told me Sticky Toffee Pudding was on it. Yeah. I love Sticky Toffee Pudding. I love Sticky Toffee Pudding too. Mate, the person that I went out. Stupid too. I love Stupid too. Now, the person that went out, is oh, it, it stresses me out, that program. Like, you wouldn't believe. Because, like, the pressure to to get it right. And is it going to is it gonna rise and all that shit. Um, but I'll spoil it. Slight spoilers. She forgot to put flour in the sticky toffee pudding, and it was just like a lump of. It looked like a raisin, to be honest. I'd have still eaten it. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure it was still fine, but. About flour, it, it, obviously, flour, but. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And obviously, um, Matt Lucas and Northfield in there are funny, so. There you go. And Metro Dread as well. Just go and play it. <coughs> are you going to get this game or not? Yes, 100%. Are we talking next payday or? I, I think so. Yeah, I right. want to towards the end of the month because I bought Resident Resident Eight not long ago. Mm -hmm. I was nearly started playing it. I said, "Oh no, I'll wait till near a Halloween time and start yeah. playing that." Yeah. Um, cool. I've got Guilty Gear to play. That did be an ongoing thing, and uh, Hot Wheels. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So I've got some 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 on my plate at the moment. Yeah. Um. But I mean, I. I said um, on Tuesday that the speed run is going to hit the ground running, and, and it's already doing it. Have you seen some of the videos? Yes, like I have. It's like what the fuck, man! The game's been out five minutes, and they're using that. There's an ability where you can run fast, basically, <laughs> and you can run through mm -hmm. special blocks, and you get that ability. You can sort of cheese getting about, mm -hmm. and oh, I, I can't wait until we're down. I think the what's the world record? Is it two hours? Is it? Hold on. How long did it take you to complete? So like the average. My average dead run of like blind, didn't look at a guide. Fucking, mm -hmm. it's gone down again. 
um, didn't look at a guy, just got lost a few times, didn't get, didn't, not 100% about it by any means, it's about 9 hours or so, 8, mm-hmm. 9 hours. Um, but I mean, if you're 100%ed it, um, did it on hard and all that shit, blind, you can't do it blind on, on hard because you have to do it, then it, hard mode becomes available. Um, we're talking 15 hours if you're 100%ed it and you don't know where the fuck you're going. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the world record at the minute <coughs> is 1 hour, 38 minutes and 33 hundredths of a second. How do people memorise that so quick? Uh, it's been out 5 minutes. Oh, Jesus. it's so good. It's so good. It feels great. And watching somebody speedrun it is... <laughs> do you know what I mean? And the game rewards you as well, because if you, if you break it, there's... A... I want to spoil a bit. Sorry. You've obviously seen it, because it's in all the trails. Craid is in the game. And there's like... If you, you don't... Like... It's designed so you don't get the bomb. You can get the more but you don't get the bombs. Um, but if you do get the bomb, there's like a little secret passage on the bottom left. So you go in the Morpole, use the bomb, and then blow up the block. And then there's like a spinny thing, and you can be the Morpole and go into its stomach and start fucking terrorizing bombs and create its belly. It's dead good. Um, Very cool. Yeah, but there's like stuff like that. I, I, I'd love to see more stuff like that um, be discovered over the next few months, or probably next few fucking days, to be honest with you. Um, but. Mate, we're gonna be under an hour soon for that speed run. Yeah, I bet it gets like half an hour or something mm. like bet that. Bet you next time we're on this show, I bet it's less than an hour. What do you reckon? Probably 38 minutes. Shave it off. We'll see. We'll see. Um, and oh, it's so good. It, it's dead good. But, Jam, <coughs> <coughs> should we crack on? Excuse me. No, Rob today. Rob's chilly. He's been back on Tuesday. He's, he's told us. Um, but you figured that out. He's not in the box. He's not. James, birthday today, I think. It's this week. Um, you found a Max Payne. <laughs> Never played the second one. Have you not? I don't think so. That one's cool. Um, Max Payne 2 is 18 years old today. Um, so it can legally drink in the United Kingdom. How would you like them apples, mate? I bet he's going out getting wasted. He's getting streaming today, mate. Um, so happy birthday, Max Payne. Did you play any of the Max Payne games? You played one or three? One and three, but three I didn't finish because I've got a game-breaking bug. Yeah, I remember that game-breaking bug. I finished it, but the second time I went through it, I got the bug, so I was like, fuck this. Yeah, I, I didn't I quite liked. Three, I, 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 I quite liked three. Um, but it was cool, from what I remember. But And that song in this trailer was sick as well. Um, but happy birthday, Max Payne 2. Um, but Jam, are you ready? Do you know what System Shock is? No. Okay, I'll, I've got this, don't worry. Um, System Shock live action series based on video game franchise in the works from Binge and Night Dive Studios. System Shock is the spiritual prequel. Not prequel. It was there before. Bioshock is a spiritual successor to System Shock. Um, and there is a th- System Shock 3 probably going to come out i don't know it's showdown the the you've seen the you've seen it um it gets memed a lot um binge an upcoming game entertainment streaming platform i didn't know that um has added a live action series adapted to night dive studio system shot to its slate of original programming um i want to get the synopsis of the system shop and see, see, see if it grabs you it probably will to be honest Right. Really? System Shock is a nineteen ninety System Shock two is better, by the way. Play that one. I wanna get that instead. That one's better. System Shock two is a nineteen ninety nine action role playing survival horror video game designed by Ken Levine of Bioshock fame. Um co developed by Rational Games and Looking Gas Studios, originally intended to be a standalone title. Its story was changed during production to a sequel to the nineteen ninety four game System Shock, which is why they have ish. Do you know what I mean? Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, it's like it's for peanuts on Steam, mate. If you want to grab it, um, no way. Let's see how much. Raman no Dr- Raman Juardi is a composer on it. Raman Juardi of um, Game of Thrones and Gears of War fame. So, Gears you of say War. System, System Shock is peanuts. System Shock Two. 
I'm gonna say System Shock 3199. Yeah, that is the remake, is it? Is I there a... think so. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But System Shock 2 should be about... Seven three... quid. Yeah. Well, in a sale, you could probably pick that up for a quid or two. Right, uh, what that on your... Um... On your wish list, mate? Uh, sorry. I mean, if... But, yeah, I mean, I'm interested to see... Um, with it not being System Shock 2, Showdown's probably not in it. Um, System Shock is an iconic franchise adored by gamers for more than two decades in a series that helped redefine what it meant to be an FPS. Um, that was... Who said that? Do you know when you read an article and there's adverts everywhere and I'm having to fucking piece together paragraphs? There it yes, is. I, I can't stand that. It's annoying. Al Alan Ungar said that. He is the um, chief content officer of Binge. Um, so oh. I'm sure it's in good hands. Um, oh, okay, we're excited to do right by the franchise and the genre and bring a system shot to life. Get ready for Showdown. So Showdown is in it. Um, I can't remember if Showdown's in the first game. You'll have to forgive me. Um, I can't. It's been a hot minute since I've played those games. Um, but Showdown's cool. Very um, what's that space film called? Hal. Very Halish. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I can't let you do. Oh, what's he say? What's the name? I'm sorry, Peter. I can't let you do that. Is it Peter? What's the name? Space Odyssey. Oh yeah. What's, I mean, what's the I thing? Can't remember the name. I'm sorry, Peter. I can't let you do that. It's like a, a portal ripped it off. <coughs> yeah. Sorry. I can't. I'm sorry, Dave. I can't let you do that. All right. Moving on. Jam. Yeah. This trailer. Next trailer we'll talk about dropped on Tuesday, but I missed it completely until after the show. I do apologize everybody. I know you I know you're all upset that we missed this trailer, but I I've not seen it yet. Have you not seen this trailer? I still haven't watched it though. Right. I I'm I didn't know this film existed until I saw a reaction video of this trailer and I'm like, what are you talking about? And I saw like an aged look at I don't want to say aged. Courtney it's Cox older. Mature. mature looking Courtney Cox um, in this video uh, this, uh, sorry in this screenshot and I'm like what is this is this real and then um, obviously Neve Campbell's in it uh, David Arquette's back and I'm just I don't know if you know this about me I'm, I fucking love Scream I mean it's great it is great um, it's uh, like a, a stuff that's self aware like because it, it knows it's a slasher get bow where are we mate it knows well, it's a, you know. it, it knows it's a slasher film Mm -hmm. it, it, it's well aware of, of the tropes of slasher films and it sort of leans into them um, which so, spoilers, Final Fantasy 7 remake does, it's not on that level but it's kind of the same thing um, and, but I've this trailer man, I mean it's by the dudes who did Get Out is it Get Out? It's not Get Out I've seen that but I really want to see that it's not. I Get think Out I've, yeah, I think I've made that out. Let me just uh, look at the directors before I put the trailer on everybody. It'll be two seconds. Right. The directors are Matt Bettinelli Alpin and Tyler Gillett. Or Gillett. Sorry, Tyler. Right. Well, right. Tyler did VHS. He was a cinematographer on that. Um, oh, no, he directed that as well. Uh, Ready or Not. Uh, that's apparently really good. Ready or Not. I've not seen it myself. But it, yeah, this, it, uh, these two did that and uh, VHS. I believe people like VHS. I think it's very wreckish. Um, that was in 2012, and they they both worked on that film with David Bruckner, who was so who's directing this? Um, Matt Bettinelli Alpin and Tyler Gillett, who oh, right. are a VHS fame and Ready or Not, which apparently I've not seen them, but apparently they're both really good. Um, and yeah, Scream oh <clears throat> Scream is out next year in January. Um and it uh, mate. I'm watching it now, it looks mate, pretty cool. I'm I was very surprised by the quality of this trailer. I've gotta be honest with you, James. Cause um is that right, yeah, I, so. I like the OG some of the OGs are in it. Yeah, like Courtney Cox and David Arquette and uh, Sydney Prescott, Nick Neve Campbell's character, like the main beat, and it's like you assume it's, and obviously they they sort of lean into the 
the first bit with like the Drew the Drew, Drew Barrymore bit oh, in the first one. What is in it? Um, you wouldn't know. I would know. What's his name? Uh, oh, I can't remember. He's in the boys. He is someone's oh. son from Frequency. Oh, I can't remember the name. Never mind. And obviously, because it's the 21st century, they've got central locking on the mobiles and these sorts. Messing about with that and everything. Um, I'm going to whack it on a bit. Let me see. Well, there he is. Ghostface Killer, whatever he's called. That's it. Dennis Quaid's son. I don't know what his name is, I know it's Dennis Quaid, and Meg Ryan, son. Something about this one. My god. Is it this dude? The, I remember, I'm, the, I'm the, out of sync with you. The He's the, on the... Oh no, the long hair dude. No, no, no. It's the... He's yeah. in the background, just there. Oh, right, okay. He knows, mate. Oh, I know what you mean. That guy that yeah. was talking to David Lockett. Yeah, yeah, Um It says at the, the, at the end of the trail. I'm just, sorry, I'm just scrubbing through it. There you go. That's all pretty cool. Hello, Sydney. It's an honor. So, obviously, some copycat bellend. Um, what are you up for Scream? But I'm fucking... Yeah. Oh, Scream 4 wasn't... It was alright, wasn't it? it was, I thought it was alright. Did you not like Scream 4? Did you see Scream 4? Hayden Panettiere was in it. I can't, I can't remember. Yeah, I did see. We went yeah. to the cinema. We, we went, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I yeah, thought it was alright. Scream 4 was good. <laughs> um, but I'm up, I'm up for more Scream, mate. Final Scream is shit, don't, don't get me wrong. Scream 3 is... 2 was alright. 2 was good. Um, I, what, I honestly can't remember. I remember 1. Yeah, what one's Cause like? One's the best one. Yeah, and obviously, um, Matthew Williard and the other dude were fantastic. As I forgot he was in it. Yeah, like, Shaggy. It's dead weird going because like, he's known as now he's known as Shaggy, but back then it was like yeah. the Scream dude. Um, but uh, mate, I'm in. Uh, obviously, Wes Craven. Rip no longer with us. Um, I'm sure. Mm. I'm sure. I'm sure. Hopefully, be proud of them. The, the dudes that doing this show, uh, the film. But Jam, should we crack on? <coughs> Indeed. Yeah, let's crack Do you think on. we'll get a scary movie 2022? I hope not. <laughs> the first three scary movie films are great. I like the first two. I can't remember the third one. Third one's got Kevin Hart in it. Oh, I... and uh, not... Leslie Nielsen. As in Nielsen's a fucking legend. It, it, was, it wasn't as good as the first two, but I still it, it gets some laughs from me. Yeah, the the second one's the dude with the the hand. Yeah, that guy, right? That muscle hair child. It, it's got that other actor who's in everything, but you could, I can't think of his name. What? What? The, the, the guy? One? Yeah, the guy with the the glasses. He's very. He's just in everything. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, well, I, don't I, know I, I, can't, I can't remember his name. Anyway, Jam. Do you, live in the, do you live in the US? Do not. Well, unfortunately, then. Um, Sony have opened up a registration um, for an opportunity to purchase a PS5 console from PlayStation on their website. Hallelujah, or what? Are you not bothered? I know you're not bothered. We're not bothered. We have, we have, we have PlayStations, mate. You know what I mean? There we go. Um, we do have I but I mean I, I, I assume the pandemic's had a lot to do with this, but it, it's like come on, let me just go to a shop and buy one. Mm -hmm. You got these fucking pricks that buy fucking fifty and then can't sell them because they're asking for eight hundred pound each. You know who you are. Go fuck yourself. Um Agreed. But I mean, the fact that you have to sign in, register interest, and then they'll send you an email saying you can, but it just seems a bit, even with the pandemic, it just seems a bit, you know, a bit. Mm -hmm. yeah, but if you are in the States, get over to PlayStation.com, I have that all sorted. Um, and Gemma, I saw one of the fucking coolest videos I've ever seen in my entire life the other day. I've watched that video before. Have you seen it? A different version. I don't know if that's a 30th anniversary, mate, though, whatever it is. This video but, yeah. should be in a fucking museum, mate. I'm not I even... watched, like, 
it must have been like two three months yeah. ago i watched like a full like 45 yeah. minute documentary Mate. about Mate. making more combat this video should be in a fucking museum it's sick in it i i, I can't I, i'll put it on screen for everybody um it's Mortal Kombat, Ed Boon, obviously, the legend that is Ed Boon, um, Mortal Kombat creator, creator of Injustice as well. Um, just like Scorpion's iconic get over here, he was just him, they were doing the film and he just said, oh, do you know what would be cool if he just threw a fucking rope with a thing on the end and I'm just thinking that was how you come up with it. Are you serious? Oh, like, like that. Yeah, just like some, some of the best ideas ever is just... Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But uh, sample, I, I, I watched. I couldn't believe what I was watching when I watched this yeah, video. Yeah. yeah, like so. The, obviously, Mortal Kombat is like they filmed actual actors doing the moves, and then they sort of superimpose them in the game. Yeah, when even graphics, it's it is just real life. Yeah, and I don't know if you can see. Uh, he's just explaining about how it would be cool if ninjas have ropes, and he's just. That's actually crazy, <laughs> right, and I, I, I just needed to, to mention this video. Um, but this video should be on loop in a museum, I'm telling you. Do you know what I mean? Or at least in that I, I something. Mm -hmm. It should be like... on. Uh, I, like Get Over It is like iconic in video games. Right. Everyone knows it, who plays. Even some people that don't play video games, everyone knows it because of the films as well. It's like, get over it! Do you know what I mean? I know what you mean. Yeah. Well, Mortal Kombat's cool. We'll go and play it. Which is... Mortal is Mortal ten, nine the best one or what? Nine is my favourite. Right, what's the best one? Probably eleven. Eleven. Right. Why isn't eleven your favourite? I don't know. I don't know, like, it's a... Uh, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. Like, nine is more of a... It's, Closer to the originals and classics rather than what it is today. Mm -hmm. Like they've got bigger characters on screen and it's uh the more forefront and rather set back. But like <coughs> nine was set back and you've got like um what they call them, stage fatalities. Right, okay. Were a bit more I think a bit more creative back then where you can you could punch someone up into the the acid and shit like you could do in Mortal Kombat two and things like that. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm sure you can do that in 11. But I just sure think there's can, more, I'm sure there's more can. character, I think, in 9. Yeah. And obviously Kratos is in it, so I'm talking about the PlayStation version yeah. of 9. Um, but yeah, I mean, that video needs to be in a museum. I'm telling you, it's the link to it in the chat if you want to watch it. Um, Jam. Yeah. Nintendo Switch. Had a good week or month. I can't remember what it, the thing is. Did it um, in Japan at least? So, James Bloomberg, Nintendo OLED, and then sorry, Nintendo Switch OLED has sold 138,409 units during its launch weekend in Japan. The original Switch in 2017 sold 330,000, and Switch Lite in 2019 sold 177,000. Um, that's from Bloomberg. Now, Jam, are, are you surprised by by this nonsense? I'm absolutely not. No, no picture could ever do. Right, okay. There's, there's a few pictures here as well. Um, where are we now? Let me just get the article up on the screen. I don't know if you, can, you probably don't be able to tell on 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 the stream, but I can tell straight away. Yeah. Which one is the OLED from that picture? Mm -hmm. um, even he didn't even need to say the OLED's the bottom one. I could have told, told you straight away. The tweet's coming, everybody. I'll be, I'm going to be upset if I see one out in the wild and I'm like, oh. Yeah, mum. I, um, I don't need one. I just want one. Yeah, um, it was Switch's best look, best week on the market. That wasn't Christmas, Black Friday, etc. So, um. Congratulations to that. I assume the OLED model did have a. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying, Jim. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> Nintendo's spokesperson said the company has no plans to reduce pr Switch prices. It cut the standard model's price in Europe last month largely in response to a change in currency exchange rates. Um, oh, 
other one was being released. Yeah, I don't believe anything that person says. Uh, with most people that were going to buy a Switch now owning one, seeing supply come back into balance after months of shortages could be a sign that some of the demand, especially that which was pulled forward during the height of the pandemic, is now starting to wane, said Bloomberg intelligence analyst Matthew Canterman. Ooh. Uh, the other model is beautiful, and once you see it, you wouldn't want to compromise with the standard, you should have said. That's just sued, uh, where is the person? I don't know, from Nintendo, I assume. <coughs> um, Jam, you interested in all that? You said that you'd want to wait for a a pro. Yes, I am. Yeah, so I think I'm in the same boat as you. Uh, I did, I'm, I'm still, I'm, I can convince myself to get one, mm -hmm. but I have to convince it convince myself not to because i'm thinking to myself like i've got my switch right here mm -hmm. that's connected to this monitor in mm -hmm. front of me mm -hmm. and i could switch to hmr play smash or whatever but i'm thinking hmm, i could have the switch for downstairs too mm, you could mate first world problems it first does, world indeed mate <laughs> but um my, i mean i well we have two docks because me and jade have both got a switch yeah. so one's here mm -hmm. the other's over there but well, yeah obviously it's gonna be upstairs and downstairs soon but um or different rooms anyway um but i mean yeah i mean that apparently that dock that comes with the oled can project 4k um footage i believe let me just let me do a bit of digging here mate um now would you be if it is if it was true like oh it's going to be able to project 4k would you then buy a new one or it's not necessarily the resolution. I mean, the resolution is great handheld. Mm -hmm. It's not necessarily the resolution on the TV that bothers me. It's the power. I agree. Switch and then PNG. Yeah. You know what I mean? um, yeah. So the, the Nintendo Switch OLED. I'm reading when we're at Tech Radar. So obviously, you know the professionals. Uh, Henry Saint Ledger. Uh, the Nintendo Switch OLED is harboring a 4K secret. Apparently. Apparently, the chip in it. Um, let me find it. Um, let me find it, Jam. Maybe two seconds, mate. I've I've seen it. I can't remember what the chip's called, though. You have to forgive me. Nintendo Switch OLED looks to have a few tricks under its sleeve after someone cracked open the Switch's OLED uh, new and improved TV dock and found evidence of 4K capability hidden in plain view. It's probably Spawn Wave, to be honest. Um, Tears everything down. That, right? uh, Twitter user Calundram, but I assume it's Spawn Wave's done it as well. If you go over to his channel, he's fantastic. Go and watch him. Go subscribe and all that shit. Um, but subscribe here first. I'll do what, what you need to do. Um, that added to the include right. Right, I'm gonna I'm gonna read what it says. Um, there's a specific chipset inside the Switch OLED dock. A real tech chip listed as a 4k uhd multimedia soc that added to the inclusion of the hdmi 2.0 cable with the new switch oled console shows that the dock itself should be capable of outputting 4k 60 fps to a compatible tv even if the switch hardware itself isn't dun 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 you assume that's i i don't think the switch hardware is going to push out 4k but when you start talking about cloud shit and with there being a oh i see i see with yeah. there being this is me talking this is an article this is me this is me stream the 4K. yeah stream probably stream the 4k and with there being an ethernet port on the dock itself as well um we're putting two and two together getting three and a half you know what i'm saying jim mm -hmm. um, i'm not sure if you agree with me now but um i mean i'd rather a, a beefier one yeah, do you know what I mean? Like, a, <laughs> uh, but this is Nintendo, and we'll just get a fourteen forty one probably. But handheld fourteen forty is more than enough because obviously the it's smaller. Do you know what I mean? It's fine. Yeah, even ten eighty is fine. The screen that big, but um, for, well, for me, it is I'd, I'd I'd rather have a high frame rate yeah. than a yeah, um, I would do. But you know what I mean? But um, it's just food for four jam. Is. Um, but keeping with the Switch, if I may, um, going back to the greatest game ever made, obviously, um, Metro Dread has absolutely stanked um, the series' first weekend sales, in Japan at least. Um, Famitsu, big sales data I've got here now. Are you ready? 
Um, Metro Dread has sold 86.798... 86,000, it means. Uh, physical units in, since launch in Japan, which is a franchise record. The one that was since... First week, where are we? I've got I've got the data here. So I'm sick. There's no data on Metroid Prime Pinball, and there's no data on Metroid Famicom Disk System. But you assume they're nowhere near eighty-seven thousand. I um, don't think so. No. Um, right. So, where are we? The closest one was Metroid Fusion, which was forty-nine thousand. <laughs> then it was other REM at forty-four thousand. Metroid Prime. Which is thirty nine thousand Metro Zero Mission thirty nine thousand, and gradually going down to Metroid Prime Two Echoes new play control on the Wii at one thousand seven hundred. But um, I mean, you assume with digital that, that that's only physical sales. You assume with digital sales, it's going to be hundred hundred twenty thousand at least. Um, but um, this is this is good for the Metroid series because you know it doesn't sell that well. So I'm I'm happy. And obviously, with it being at number three in the UK charts as well, it's number one all over the eShop charts. Wonder why? Give me another one. That's because of you. Don't make me wait seven. Don't make me wait twenty years, mate, for Metroid no, Six. Give you an F Zero, mate. You, I'll take an F Zero all day long, mm -hmm. mate. Um, and also, Jam <coughs> VGC here. Um, Metroid Dread has triggered a franchise sales boost across multiple flat platforms, platforms even. Um, Wii U, 3DS, and Switch all see Samus return to the top of the charts. Um, so the Wii, Wii U, yeah, the Wii U charts have Metroid Fusion, Metroid Zero Mission, Metroid oh, Prime okay, Trilogy, okay. and Super Metroid all make the top ten. On the 3DS charts, Metroid Samus Returns has climbed to number three. Both Metroid and Super Metroid are also playable on Nintendo Switch Online, so there you go. Um, but it? yeah, <coughs> so I've got this in here. Switch, Metroid Dress number one. It's in the, you, This is UK charts. Uh, Wii U, Fusions 1, Zero Missions 2, Prime Trilogy 7, and Super Metroid is 9, and 3DS Metroid Samus Returns is third. Um, so roll on that well, match. Mate, roll on that Metroid Prime remake. I'm fucking ready. You know what I mean? I'm. We're ready. Ah, bit number two D one. No, Prime Four, mate. Give oh, it. Me. Yeah. Oh yeah. I forgot we got Prime Four. Yes. I forgot about that. We forgot about it because it started it again. But we're yeah, we're yeah, started again millions of years. Yeah, ago. we're about ready to see something. I think. Um, perhaps next year. Hopefully, yeah. perhaps uh, E3 or E3 next year Jack. or the Autumn Dread next year. <laughs> What you think we'll see it at the Autumn Direct, and you won't get it like a little snippet for January next year? I I, I think I think they'll do. It depends Holiday what it is. 20. If if it's four, potentially just to remember, we've still got this in the in the cooker. Mm -hmm. But if it's Prime Remake, I think they'll just do what they did with Dread and just show it at E3 and release it in like. Where's that? There's that rumor of uh, the next Switch for 2022, mm -hmm. like Holiday 2022. That will tie in with. Metroid mm -hmm. 4 that'd be, that'd be a good launch title for it especially yeah. after the success they're having now with it yeah exactly and I I, I, I know the rumour has gone from Prime Trilogy to Prime 1 Remake full on Doof. but I, I really I really think just put all the Metro games on Switch what are you doing yeah. the money on the table Prime Money's Trilogy there. is a fucking bargain Did you, have you ever, ever played Prime no. No. Metro Prime right, is, is one of the finest games ever created. It's brilliant. Is and, it though? Yeah. And I'm I'm curious. I need to have a conversation, but I don't know which one I prefer. Three D or two D Imagine going it's mental. Like it, it's like turning like when Mario turned three D, it was basically the same thing. Um, That's true. But when Metroid went to Metroid Prime, it was they turned it from like a side scrolling Metroidvania. It's still Metroidvania by DNA, but it, it it's because it's first person. It feels like fucking it's polarizing, mate. And I remember when it was first. You know what I mean? Down. Gibbo does know. Gibbo gets it. I appreciate Gibbo. Um, 
But yeah, I mean, we could, I could talk this all. I could talk about this all day. Um, I won't know because we've got shit to do, mate. Um, but Jam, moving on to a franchise you know and love, uh, Call of Duty. Is I'm joking. <laughs> Got them. Um, well, Call of Duty and uh, Battlefield both revealed new game modes. That, well, I say new. Get you Call, say new. Call of Duty revealed fucking zombies, and Battlefield. Oh my god! Did they? Yeah, imagine my shock, mate. <laughs> Battlefield introduced hard zone, hazard zone. Sorry, oh, hard hard zone. Yeah, we are hard zone, mate. Um, Jam, yeah, have you seen the trailer for Hard Zone yet? I have seen I've the said it, I've said it again, Hazard Zone, come on. Because the the logo is weird, and it... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it looks like hard, and the, the Zs look like blocks. I'll put it on the screen. Um, I've not seen this trailer, Jam. What are we thinking? So, I thought it was just going to be Battle Royale. It's like, oh, whatever. It's not, is it, from what I understand? It's not. It, ish. Mm -hmm. Ish. But like Battlefield is objective based, so mm -hmm. it's squad versus squad versus squad versus squad with whatever shooting out of the sky lands mm -hmm. and capsules and mm -hmm. get it's like a hard drive, a data disc, you have to get it and retrieve it and take it back. It's basically like capture the flag with X amount of teams. Okay. How many do, team do we know how many teams that there are? No, not yet. Oh, no. I don't know. Cool. Okay. Trailer, trailer's cool. Yeah. Trailer's I mean, always this cool. Looks, to be fair. This, uh, this looks cool. This looks clean. Um, it does. It's something newish. Yeah. So it, it wasn't, what, way out. wasn't what you expected. Or no. Would you? Is this? Is this the mode that you'd be happy to yes. sink all these hours in, or are we? Uh, uh, this is the thing. Like, um, with these games, I'm, uh, I would have to have a full. I'd have to have a squad. Yeah. But, but, Two, three people, so, oh, four people. And so it'll be like me and S, Gibbo, mm -hmm. you and mm -hmm. whoever. Um, then, then and only then you'll be all over it. But um, apart from that, it'll just be. That's the thing. Like Battlefield's not. I mean, I know people do it. They're like having the most kills on the map because you know, I've got the most kills. But it's an objective-based mm -hmm. game. You get more points. You get more points playing the objective than you do killing people. You do. So. Um, that's why I like Battlefield more than Call of Duty. I can appreciate that, mate. But speaking of I, Call of Duty, go on, sorry. I do, I do like Call of Duty, but it's much more of an arcade yeah. kind of shooter to me. I mean, they always say, um, like, yeah, COD, like, basing, if you were making the first person shooter, there'd be no shame in using Call of Duty movement and, and things as inspiration because it just feels great. Even yeah, the, yeah, even, no, even it, the it, shit ones, even the shit ones just feel. Yeah, yeah. Like just like smooth and stuff, um, but I've not seen this trailer over the zombies Vanguard trailer. Oh, my. I think there are pretty sure well, I've, I've not even seen a trailer for Vanguard. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think I have either. But apparently, I think there's a Nazi on the front of this. Is that a Nazi? It does look like an SS yeah. soldier. Yeah. yeah. Um, or no, Wolfenstein, mate. I, I just yeah. he just said Mount Fury. Yeah. yeah, there's like a yeah. I might be in that small minority, but I could not give two hoots about Call of Duty Zombies. I don't think I've ever played it. Not that bothered. I'm getting Doom vibes as well, so... It does look, yeah. Obviously it's, cool. it's not Obviously not as good as Doom. The Doom's brilliant. Oh, it's fucking Billie Eilish. Not in the, the song. Oh, I thought she was a zombie. Maybe one day. Maybe. Maybe. If we're lucky, mate. Um, it definitely looks like Call of Duty Zombies. I'm sure people that like zombies will have a great time. Um, so, obviously, Tom Ivan from VGC. Zombie is developed um, by the Moe's original creator, Treyarch. Rather than Sledgehammer Games, which is leading development of Van, Van Gogh's campaign. So, I didn't realise he started doing that. I do not care, however. Um, Jim, are you getting the Call of Duty Vanguard? It's out November 5th. Probably not. I don't think I will ever. But the last Call of Duty <laughs> game I got was World War Two, and that was because it was in Humble Bundle, and I've not touched it since. So, I I got last year's one. <laughs> Modern War. No. Cold War. Cold War. That was right. Yeah. To just mainly to see what it, the haptic feedback felt like. <laughs> yeah. It was fine. It's it like, didn't cost me anything. Yeah. It was just. 
It was like that's what I did. Um, I, I probably put like twenty hours, twenty four yeah. hours into it, something like that. Anyway, like when the Wii U came out, I, I bought that that year's Call of Duty Black Ops three or two. I'm not can't yeah, remember. I remember playing that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'd like to know what it, what it was like handhelds on the thing. <laughs> now, I, Switch was feels more, far superior to that, but yes, I don't think I. I wouldn't rush up to the shops to buy Call of Duty. And I know like, what I said, just said, like, it always feels slick and smooth and everything, but I don't like bit. I don't know if, about you, Jim. I don't like things shoved in my face. No. Like, just, all right, it's there again. Mm -hmm. I get it. Just fuck off. Um, I, I kind of, I know, I know Rob has, a, has like a bold um, prediction about Call of Duty not coming out this year, but I wish it was right because. Not that I don't want people to have fun or anything, but I just I just fuck off. It's every just, year. Just which let it breathe. It, I think for, <coughs> I think for people mate, for people that play it like a lot every day, that's fine. Mate, but people will fucking just, buy that shit up all day long. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And I don't think it, I think if they made it bi yearly, every two years, it they'd get more money's worth out of it. It's like, Sort of mm. thing like, like Warzone, people will probably get more money's worth out of Warzone than they would the actual standalone games. Probably because they'll change it with battle passes, like Rocket League does. It's just a new model of how they make games now. They just make one game, build on it for a million years. Mm -hmm. no, I agree. That's what, that's what Warzone is, I suppose. Yeah, like I, I, stuff like that. On when it's like things like this, like a, a football game, for example, like e football, which is a swing and a miss, but I, I like the premise. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah, I reckon I just, that. Just, I, re I reckon that'd be the future anyway. Yeah. Where they kind of start. It might start yeah. off roping. You never know. Just yeah. Give it three or four years. It might be slapping FIFA around really? again. Really. The, the physical sales of FIFA have dropped a bit, so you never know, mate. Mm -hmm. um, speaking of FIFA Jam, mm -hmm. I've got a surprise for you now. You're going to be shocked by this revelation, but you'll never guess what the reason. Um, EA is thinking about dropping the FIFA branded. You'll never guess in a million years. You'll never Why get it. it. Well, it's it comes down to, and I'm going to shock you with this revelation, like I've just said, right? It comes down to money. My God. Imagine the shock of my face. It's an outrageous amount of money, though. So, right, I'm reading from Z Huge GX or Daniel Ahmad, the industry analysis, lives in China. Um, a new report in the New York Times states that the dispute between EA and FIFA is related to cost and new revenue streams. I mean, you'll ca call me flabbergasted, mate, because I'm just blown away by that. Rev I'm just, I can't believe it, as you can tell. FIFA wants to charge EA double the amount, $1 billion plus every four years, by the way. Um, for the license and limit EA's ability to monetize beyond the game itself. I can, I'm down with that. Fuck EA. Stop charging. Nice. <coughs> well, it's a lot of money, right? Yes. And as much as I do think EA are money grubbing, they'll, they'll fucking pe they'll penny pinch every cent they can, <laughs> mate. Do you know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. they're a corporation and that's what they do. But um, that is a lot of money. A billion every four years. Um, so, <coughs> Tariq Panja, sorry Taz if I butchered your name there, uh, from the New York Times, big article, big article. Um, if you want to dive in, I'll put it in the chat for you. So you can have a mooch, you know what I mean? Um, have a mooch, you so, um, to the members of people around the world, the letters FIFA now represent not actual soccer, but instead a one word shorthanded for the hugely popular video game series that has become a fixture in the lives of players as diverse as Premier League pros, casual fans, and even uh, gamers with no other relation to the sport. That is correct. This is what we were saying, right? Because people say FIFA now, they don't think of the big corporation that runs the fifth pro, whatever the, yeah. the, yeah. they think of the game. Um, yeah. Which is fair enough why they want compensating for it. Um, I never got when people say, "Oh, if Messi likes if Messi likes Barcelona so much, why don't he just play there for free?" I'm like, "Why should he? Barcelona would make yeah, yeah. wedge off his name, and he should be compensated for it." As, mm. as ludicrous as the money is, um, I, I just don't think he should. I don't blame him for not. I mean, the Liga 
we'll talk about football later but um so sales of the game which releases an updated edition every year have surpassed 20 billion dollars by the way um over the past two decades for its california based maker electronic arts but fifa has cashed in as well its licensing agreement has grown to the, become the organization's single most valuable commercial agreement now worth 150 million a year um and obviously they're trying to push and obviously with the billion every four years they're obviously one about 100 million more every year um there are people soaring in the world by the way and this they're is, talking about this, this much money this this is what would i mean i get corporations have to make money <laughs> I, I get that's what they do but come on mate um the core of the dispute is financial That sentence just says it all. The core of the, of the dispute is financial. See in a bit. Click that, click that cross, <laughs> mate. You know what I'm saying? <coughs> we don't care. No, not at all. Um, people are seeking more than double what is currently received from EA Sports, according to people with knowledge of the talks. Figure that would increase its payout uh, from the series to more than one billion each every four year World Cup cycle. Which, whatever. Um, the dispute is not just about money, though. Of course it is. The talks have also stalled because FIFA and EA cannot agree what the gamer's exclusive rights should include. FIFA would prefer to limit EA's exclusivity to the narrow parameters around use in, so in a soccer game, most likely in an effort to seek new revenue streams to the rights it would retain. EA Sports, meanwhile, contend the company should be allowed to explore other ventures within its FIFA video game ecosystem, including highlights of actual games, arena video game tournaments, and digital products. Some of that would be cool if they had, like, if you could watch highlights in FIFA, that would be cool. Um, and I'm not, I'm not sure. I mean, actual, you know, I suppose yeah, that's more like, like stuff, though. Isn't yeah, it? and that that obviously pushes the the wedge up. Um, but I mean, that couple of sentences I've just read there just indicate that EA and EA's new football game probably won't be called FIFA within the next two or three years. Yeah. Um, writing's on the wall, mate. You know what I mean. You know what I'm, saying. I'm sure. I'm sure. I'll get over it. But um, well, mate, we don't care. We don't yeah. give two shits. <coughs> but for those that do, probably don't anyway. Because like we said, they'll walk into a shop. There'll be a big fucking POS stand with EA Sports logo on it, a similar looking cover. I'm gonna buy it. Think it's FIFA. That's FIFA anyway. It's done, mate. You know what I mean? Yeah. Probably says from the developers that brought your FIFA on it or something if they're allowed to say that I'm not sure but um, they'll, they'll swing it so it's easy for the casual to walk into a supermarket and grab it and, but we'll crack on mate um, mm. it, right. it'd be like very similar to when um, the Xbox Series X went on sale and the Xbox yeah. One sale one, one X, one X no. sale went yeah. through the roof yeah it's, <laughs> they went up and I'm like okay so obviously some grandma's yeah. bought the wrong Xbox. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, you can play the same games, but it's not the point. Yeah, yeah. Um, Jam. Mm -hmm. Mr. PlayStation, Mr. VR. I call you that because you have a PlayStation and you have a VR. I have a PlayStation. They call them boxes, don't I? Yeah, you take the box. That's all I need, mate. Um, it's PSVR's fifth anniversary this year. Mental. Isn't it crazy? It feels mm -hmm. like just yesterday we were at my two brother's house and we played Batman and yeah, um, that was the getaway game. I can't remember. Sorry, Blood and Fist or something. I can't remember what it's called. Everything it the VR worlds, Blood and Truth. Your Truth, that's it. Um, that was alright that game. Um, well, that's why I made a full game of it eventually. Mm -hmm. mhm, mm mhm. Mm so um, to celebrate, I'm reading from Isabel Tomatis. Sorry, Isabel. Um, from the PlayStation blog, senior director, of PSVR, esports, peripheral marketing, etc., etc. Very high in the PlayStation world, mate. Uh, today marks no fifth, exactly. It's today, by the way, fifth anniversary. <laughs> um, I would say at the moment, fan club fans, talented developers, everyone, we're on a VR high today. Let's do it. Celebrates PSVR milestone. Wants to give a special thank you to PlayStation fans. Starting in November, PlayStation Plus members will get free PSVR bonus games with no extra charge. Stay tuned for more details. Um, it doesn't say what games they are. Is it these? Oh, the most most games. 
Sorry, most played uh, games globally by playtime hours. Uh, Rec Room, Beat Saber, PlayStation VR World, Elder Scrolls VR, uh, sorry, Elder Scrolls Five, Skyrim VR, and Resident Evil 7 Biohazard VR. Resident Evil 7 in VR is fucking brilliant, by the way. It's really, really good. Um, but it doesn't tell me yet what these three games will be, but um, I hope they're going to be good. Do you have any hope for these games, or are you just going to get them and... Guys, I, I ask this quite regularly, but how often did you check out your VR? Have you played it since you moved in? No. No. How long have you been there now? Nearly a year. Is it a year? And it, oh. I have been wanting to do it. It's not the fact of the VR, it's the fact of setting it Is it, it the up. FAF? Is it the FAF? It's the FAF. FAF. Yeah. I can appreciate that, mate, because half the time I don't play my retro games is because I've got the TV on, the, on top of the cupboard in there, and I've got to dig out my GameCube, I've got to dig out my PS2, I've got to dig out my SNES or whatever. I don't have a table about, so I've got a fucking ass. That I've got, and I'm just enough, like, oh, I'm like, oh, fuck. I can just go on a Switch, SNES library, I'm away. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, but um, would you recommend a PSVR to, to some, anybody on? Not at full price. Not at full price, okay. Um, well, I don't know I don't know how much full price is now. Yeah, exactly. I've got mine for like 100 Yeah, I think they're about 150 200 pounds still. Um, it's 250 to buy. Oh, are they? Think so. I have no idea, mate. I'll just pull that out of my ass. Sorry. I'll check. I'll check this on. Check this on for me whilst we go on to the. I, I always said if I was going to get a VR, I'd get a Oculus Quest, the one with no wire, and you just put it on as like a PC. I get oh, that. I get that one. Uh, apparently, they're sold out on the uh, on the. That Amazon. helps our Quest for the price, doesn't it? Um, uh, but well, what, what PlayStation VR Mega Pack is three hundred and three quid. Oh, you get a lot of games with that, don't you? Yeah, and the starter pack e starts at doesn't say doesn't say that's helpful. No. It is that is helpful. Uh, but Jam, Mister Star Wars, reading from Jared Moore, my Jen. Um, now the official Star Wars Twitter account put a tweet out. As Twitter accounts tend to tweet things, Jam. Yep, they do. Um, it says this fall, bring mm. home the bounty. Check out the new Star Wars inspired products and head over to bringhomethebounty.com to discover new launches every Tuesday. Oh, it's going to be a Mandalorian <sighs> video game. Is that what your guess is? Because I was getting uh -oh. to that. Because it's his bounty all over the show. Yeah, exactly. it, it, so we are. Where is it? Oh, cool. There you go. Um, so they tweeted the link to this website, and then there's all these special things coming. I'm going to zoom in. Um, so from week one, which is now, right? It's today, right? Mm -hmm. <coughs> week two is October 9th, so I assume it is. Yeah. Are you feeling? What is what's all this stuff? I don't know, but uh, the season, um, bring on the battle. There's all this season with new products spanning the Star Wars Galaxy, so I assume figures and, oh, thing and, really and whatever. Uh, but yeah, yeah. Um, December 14th. This one people are um, drawn to because they just show a gamepad um, on that day. So, with all this shite and with it being called Bring Home the Bounty, um, temper your expectations. Obviously, what are you? If it is a video game, what what is it going to be? It'll be a phone Mandalorian. Mandalorian, phone Mandalorian game, a fully fledged Mandalorian game, or no, no, it's not, it's either me, Boba Fett, or Mandalorian. Right, okay. Which and and around that time we're supposed to be getting the Book of Boba. Exactly. So is it going to be a bounty hunter remaster? Has that happened? No. Yeah. N no. But yeah, limited run did it on PS4. Yeah, but that was just a port, right? Not not. Like a... No, it was just a port. Yeah. Right. The limited not... run did the physical. Sorry, yeah. but it was ported out. Take with Race of Revenge and stuff like that. Yeah, I remember that. Um, would you want a Mandalorian game? I know I would. But... Yeah. yeah. Don't don't go yeah yeah like you wouldn't fucking straight, of course I would lap that up straight on the zone, mate. But I could think of other ones I'd want. What would you want? I know you're already getting that summer Republic. Oh maybe. yeah, I'm already getting that. We're already so getting that. So spoil. we don't we don't we're, need we're that. We're getting full in order two, but that's gonna be a while that's away. That's uh, a Garandam T, mate. Full in order yeah. two is a Garandam T. Uh, but yeah, it's gonna be so, it's gonna be that because it'll break up the thing. Or yeah. what if it's Battlefront three? I'll take Battlefront 3 all day long. I would too. Be all over that. But it's not. It's going to be a shitty phone game. <laughs> it probably will be. 
There you go. Um, but yeah, keeping out for that December fourteenth. I'm sure we'll have it on here some somewhere. Um, we'll be chilling. Uh, Jam. I learned a new word yesterday. What's that? Countersued. How was that a new word? I fucking I had no idea what it was. Suing someone that sues you back. Yeah, I didn't realize it was. A th I thought it was just. I didn't realize there was a word for it. I should say. I, I knew this because of Judge Judy. Yeah. Okay, there you go. I don't really watch Judge Judy. I watched um, Judge. Yeah, yeah, I watched him a, a bit. He's funny. Is he um, so BGC again. Uh, Google has countersued Epic Games for breach of contract in relation to Fortnite. It claims sidestepping Google Play fees led to unjust enrichment and exposed a potential dangerous security flaw. Translation: um, Google were crying that Epic got money that they couldn't claim, basically. Um, oh my fucking! Right, where are we now? So. Tom Ivan again, BGC. Google has countersued Epic Games in the latest twist in the antitrust battle originally brought against the company by the Fortnite maker. Remember 1980 Fortnite? What a joke. Ernest is in the house. Go, you should, be at, you should be at work, mate. Chili, baby, back ribs. I'm going to go to America. Go to Ernest's work. Sit down about Chili. Baby back ribs. You my baby back, baby back, baby back ribs. <laughs> uh, legal battle began in August 2020. Has it been that long? Has it been that long since you fuck? Oh my god. Oh, I swear to Christ, man. Epic then took legal action to end Apple and Google's anti competitive restrictions on mobile devices marketplace. Um, although it recently came out on the losing side in its battle with the iPhone maker. Ha! Ah, <laughs> fuming. Um, I'm not gonna. I'm not going to, to be honest. Um, Jam. Head of the Go ahead of the Google and Epic case going to trial, the platform holder has countersued the game making for what it claimed was an intentional breach of contract. It probably was, to be fair. Um, breaching its Google Play developer distribution agreement, DDA. Um, Google says Epic unjustly enriched itself at the platform holder's expense and exposed a potential dangerous security flaw. Um, the um, Epic breached these provisions of the DDA on August 13th, 2020 by activating its own external payment system through a hotfix in Fortnite to, designed to bypass Google's Play billing it, it suit reads. Um, as a direct result of Epic, Epic's breach of contract, Google has suffered injury. <laughs> sorry. It's like... Uh... <laughs> I'm sorry. Where are we? Um... Google suffered injury, including the loss of the DDA service free um, on a global basis, and the Google Play ecosystem has suffered injury because the hotfix potentially exposed a security vulnerability that could be exploited for even more nefarious purposes. <coughs> I just don't care. I, I mean, this is. I mean, we don't. So like, look at us mega rich people fighting, fighting over, each other. Yeah. That's what I get as well. We're down do. here. It's like oh, we're, we're down here. We're, we're, we're trying to make ends meet, and yeah, these are like this, this is like astronomical amounts of money. And yeah, and um, like, like we said with um, FIFA earlier, it's just like there's people starving, people get, mm -hmm. getting um, twenty getting twenty pound a week take away from the government, and it's killing them. And yeah. you're arguing over billions and billions of let's oh, fuck off. Um, <coughs> obviously, Epic's appealing, so it's going to be another fucking kerfuffle in the courtrooms I'm sure we'll keep an eye on it um, sources told the information paywall that Epic is exploring new ways to grow its brands at a time when its ambitions in the mobile game space are being restricted by its legal battles with Apple and Google, Apple and Google. translation it guarantee it'll have its own launcher on mobile soon or whatever that's probably the other way around it to be honest possibly um, yeah but I do not care because it's sh stupid money Stupid money. But, um, Jam, should we crack on? Nearly there, mate. <coughs> Three more, mate. Jam, gamers are upset. And why is that? Um, I'm gonna, I know it's a shock. I know it's hard to believe that a group of genuinely calm people 
as you can tell when you go on Twitter, um, are a bit irate at a game aimed at children. I know it's hard to believe. Right? And I know we're, we've got revelations today. All day, mate. Um, well, Pokemon... I thought they're called Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl previews are out. Um, there's some quality of life features. Let me see. I'm going to go to Cerebi. I'm not. I'm going to say I'm not. I'm going to say I'm a Nintendo enthusiast. Nintendo enthusiast Jamie Ditchfield is here. It says, um, so the previews started circulating online. Key information about the highly anticipated Cena remakes. Jam, are you in or not? In what? Uh, the Pokemon remake. Oh, no. Okay. No. Um, so quality of life and features um, including the current state of the XP share do you know what an XP share is Jim? I'm sure you can figure it out if you don't you share experience points yeah. so um, people are I'm so clever you are clever mate um, Cerebi has compiled the important details about what to expect in the next game just like what with Pokemon Shield and Shield Brilliant, Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl will include an autosave feature good However, this can be disabled if necessary. One thing you can't turn off is the EXP share, and that is ruffled some feathers, mate. What I don't know why mean? people are annoyed that you can't turn the EXP share off. I do not know, and I do not care. Um, furthermore, type effectiveness will be visible during battle, reminding newcomers and returning players like type matchups. One feature introduced to Pokemon Shoulder Shield was the ability to change your party wherever you are in a game. And brilliant, shi a brilliant Diamond and Shining Pill will allow you to do the same thing. Good. Um, although most of the f these features are for the better. Um, Vooks revealed in its preview that TMs will be single use only. That's annoying. Teach move. Teach move. Technical machines. Um, oh, I thought I was right. You are right. Um, I am right. I'm always single, right. That, oh, that's annoying a bit. Um, but it, it, it got to the point where you could do it all the time, but with a single use, obviously, probably in the shop or something, to be like a TM shop somewhere. Mm -hmm. I can't, I, it's, like I said, it's been a hot minute since I played Diamond and Pearl, even though they are one of my favourite gens. Did, did you, you, you didn't get a sword and shield, did you? I did. I got sword. Oh, you did? Okay. In the end, I did. I didn't, when it first came out, but I eventually got it. Um, it was alright. It's good. I mean, I don't get the hate. You, you didn't get the good one. Let's go. No one got that one. You got that one, did you? It's sick. <laughs> it's excellent. Pokemon is out November 19th. Um, Jam. Yeah. Being you know exactly how it's going to be. Um, are you definitely not in at all? Not even a bit of FOMO? Could... It's no FOMO because I didn't mow in the first place. I did mow in the first place. Yeah, that's true. And that's... I am the sword, mate. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, the XP shares... I mean, for people with lives and uh, responsibilities and things, uh, EXP shares are godsend. Um, mm -hmm. To not turn it off, that's a weird decision, but at the end of the day, who cares, honestly. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm interested to see how these turn out. Um, <coughs> it isn't the Pokemon company, it's they've been outsourced to the company that did something else and I can't remember who it is oh, I've got a look but yeah check it out Jam there is a new yeah. there is a new most profitable Final Fantasy baby bag rips is it Final Fantasy 14 it's by Final anyway. Fantasy 14 mate Final Fantasy 14 surpasses 24 million oh. players becomes oh, shocked. becomes most profitable Final Fantasy game in the series Jam is there any chance you're playing this game no why not no. Dread is tremendous, NS, in every way. Uh, just, no, is it just, is it too much? It, it's quite overwhelming. When you first put it on, it's quite overwhelming. Um, even, even still, even, even, if, even if it came out today, I'm still like, nah. Yeah, you're not, not an MMO guy. Um, so, uh, Lair, who's talking here now, it's done that thing, you know, they put loads of adverts in, and I'm just splitting up paragraphs. Yeah. Yes, I can't find out who's talking. Um, so, 
Naiko Yoshida revealed that Square Enix's most popular, uh, blah, Square Enix's popular MMORPG recently surpassed 24 million players. Congratulations, <laughs> by the way. Um, furthermore, it is the most profitable fan fantasy game in the series. Things of the press and the digital pre- to be fair, it's got a load of expansions and shit. Um, things of the press and the digital preview event, Yoshida revealed that the player count was uh, 24 million players in 11 years. After Final Fantasy XIV was first released, in a chart Yoshida shared with the press, Final Fantasy XIV's player count back in 2015 was 4 million. So, that's good going. There's a lot. There's a lot, mate. Um, obviously, the uh, the free playing up until level 60 and uh, the first two, Final Fantasy XIV and the first expansion, which I've forgotten what it's called, is free. I think Shadow, else, Shadowbringers, I think. I can't remember. Um, I like that game. I do like that game, but I, I don't know if I'm I like it enough to because it is a lot, mate. Final Fantasy, blah, 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 blah. I'm trying to read quick, Ennis. Leave me alone. Um, but very polarizing, Jam, because I have articles on the bottom the screen now. I'm read well, whose Twitter account says Miraculous Maku. On Twitter war. Anyone knows who that is? I it's just some Twitter dude. Um top ten comebacks of all time is the tweet and it's just Square Enix Final Fantasy fourteen greatly damaged entire brand. This was September twenty seventh, two thousand and eleven. Uh, the Final Fantasy name has been greatly damaged due to the troubled life of MMO Final Fantasy fourteen. Square Enix CEO Yochi Wada admitted today at a Tokyo press conference. That was 10 years ago, and look at today, Final Fantasy XIV surpasses 24 million players and becomes the most profitable Final Fantasy game in the series. That's another one. It's another uh, redemption arc, like um, the, the spaceship nonsense everyone like. No Man's Sky. No Man's Sky. Rainbow Six Siege at a push as well, and all that other mm-hmm. shit, so it was good. Um, so, Jam, no chance you ever play in Final Fantasy XIV. Zero. That's not a perfect, that's a, a zero. Zero. I can appreciate that, mate. Um, last but not least, Monster Hunter Rise demo is available on Steam. If Only Bishop for, cares. Only Bishop cares. Uh, NS, NS got a PC. Um, NS is a PC. Monster Hunter Rise on Steam. Go and play it. It's there. NS has a don't look it's, it looks good yeah looks it's good. out in january the on january the 12th um yet the monster Hunter rise deluxe edition which is 58 pounds 26 pence what do you get in that what's this deluxe kit how much is it 26 quid 58 pound 26 pence oh jesus um yeah demos on pc today and yeah. go download away so you get these armors I, I don't i don't know just buy the normal edition no one cares about that shit um if there wasn't a plug that I had uh, listened to more, it's that one. <laughs> you paid eighteen pound for a couple of, uh, just whatever. Um, mate, you buzz off them cigarettes, mate. But yeah, I mean, try it out. Um, so let me know what it is on PC. And um, that's what you've got to come back on Tuesday with the review of yeah, it. Yeah, I need to know uh, how Monster Hunter Expert feels about that game because the switch to be fair to the switch version it's one of the best looking games and best running games on the switch from the demo i played mm-hmm. for what it is and for what it does and ha- it, it still keeps a steady frame rate and its resolution doesn't dip too far and it's in the re engine as well which means reach for the moot re- what's our easter doesn't just not doesn't stand for resident evil it pisses me off did you know that What's that? Yeah. RE Engine. Capcom's engine. The, the one with the hand on the, the moon. Do you know the... Oh, yes, yeah, 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 yeah. It doesn't stand for Resident Evil. It stands for Reach for the Moon engine. What? I know. That pissed me off. Jam, that's all I've got it, today. Uh, shouldn't it be... Could be R- RM. F. T. M. Yeah, or RM at a push. It, yeah, hang on. Yeah, oh, just, just, uh, the cap Whatever. Um, yeah, that is all I have today, Jam. 
Do you have anything else for me? No. It's your forgotten gem. My forgotten gem. It was Rob's, but he's, he's Bell, so... The 100th forgotten gem... I have falls to comes you. to me. <laughs> um, I've... I, I thought Rob wasn't going to be here again today. Um, so I've, I've got a few in the pipeline. I think I've done the one I'm going to do, though. Because... Um, it is I'm pretty sure we've done more than a hundred, but since we're, since I've started <coughs> chronic, chronicling them, if you will, I feel like I've missed a few when I've been gone back and looked at the videos, and uh, some videos didn't go to YouTube properly, so I couldn't check. Um, and yes, you you can claim a forgotten gem with all your points. Yeah, do you want one? Do you want, do you want, do you want to do it? Well, I've got one, but do, do, does NS want to do it? The hundred forgotten gem. And that's the 100 gem. 20 seconds. They're all on Twitter and a big thread, by the way. Not tonight, tomorrow. Over the weekend. Maybe next week. Probably next week, yeah. Right, and this is good. I'm going to do one. I th Stop me if you've heard this one before. Because I've got a horrible feeling. I was, I, I was looking at. Um, sometimes I Google uh, forgotten gems and forgotten games just to. I don't know if you do it, just to give me a, a refresh. I and and I, I, I found a few, and I swear we've done them before, but they're not on my list, so I'm not sure if, if I've, I've got to write them down or give like I said. Um, so, wait there. Stephen Dawson loves this game. There's a clue for you. No, it's got a car game then, isn't it? Not a car game. Um, right, 1998. Yeah. PlayStation. PS1, PlayStation. Mm hmm. Um, third person shooter. It's an EA game. Is it? It is an EA game. Um, it was an original installment of the Strike series. Is it Spec Ops? No, it's not Spec Ops. So, Desert <laughs> Strike, Jungle Strike, Urban Strike. It was just. Originally a game in that. Okay, yeah. That um, player assumes the role of a pilot for the X One Alpha. There is a um, hang on. Oh no way, Gibber! It's not Jay Cocoon, unfortunately. Oh. Um. There is a British music composer with the same name. I assume the the name is inspired by this game. That's my assumption, but I can't. I've not seen John Williams. No, it's not John. <laughs> not John Williams, mate. Um. Uh, it's like a synth wave kind of artist. <laughs> NS has got more cash for poor points than I do. Got more points than I do as well. I don't get any, so there you go. Uh, buy, buy this channel, mate. Right? You can be CEO of the casual report. Um, uh, so, more clues, more clues, more clues. Um, X1 Alpha is a robot designed to fight the crime war in Los Angeles. I was gonna say armored core, but it's not armored core. I just, I, I may as well give it you with that sentence, mate. Robocop. It's got one of them words in it. Time cop. Keep going. It's set in. Robocop. No, it's set. That. It's set in 2098. So what word could possibly go before cop? Oh, future cop. Boom, there you go. Future cop, LAPD. Now, stop me if I've, I've done this one before. I don't think oh, I have. Armored Core was sick. Well, Armored was Core great. was sick. Hello, now, it's I've me, not played this. Byron, like like most dark. forgotten and games, I'm I've not played this shudder. game don't miss my for a million years. It, it, it sounds like a million, a years. million years, mate. Um, it's going on screen for everybody now. <laughs> um, I just realized why Rob's not showing up this week. Because he wants to keep, keep his name as a music champ. That's probably that is probably why. That's cheated, mate. Yeah. So you assume the role of this thing, robot mech. You know I love mechs, right? Obviously. 
and it's just uh, if it moves, shoot it kind of game. Um, it's probably got awkward controls with it being from the time frame that it was in. E pads and stuff. Yeah, I don't think it came out when the stick was out, so I assume it could, could be awkward now, but just give me. I mean, to be honest, in 2021, you could make a twin stick shooter of this game, and I would buy it, and I would probably love it. Um, because it's just got that sort of je ne sais quoi, that sort of twin stick kind of thing. There's no score on it, but I feel you could put a bit, bit of a score, um, high score thing on it. I forgot it did that. See, we're all learning stuff now. Ness, your correction was wrong. Yeah, Ness, it's got a U in it. What a U in it? <laughs> you mad head. That's why... <laughs> well, yeah, that's why silly spelling. Yeah. Uh, uh, that's why US localizations take so long to come. They've got to take all the U's out, mate. <laughs> um, but I mean, yeah. Um, does he, I think he completes this game with this playthrough. That'd be cool if he did. Um, sit and watch it. Yeah, sit here. Now I'm 50 minutes, right? Let's just bask in the ambience, shall we? Get rid of that advert. You know what time for I this, mate? Just the advert, too. Yeah, get rid of that. We're just chilling. Um, yeah, I mean, it. Like I said, it's got a feel of bullet hell, but I don't know, I've been missing that score, but I, I thoroughly enjoyed this game as a child. You tell young JT, you control a mech, just go around shooting bazookas, and you've got a machine gun with basically infinite ammo, but not really. Mate, right, I'm in. Do you know what I mean? But I mean, this video game can be found on <laughs> PSN. <laughs> Met Metroid, Metroid Dread. Dread. Um, I think this video game can be found on the PSN. I'm pretty sure I've got it on my Vita. I'm pretty sure it's installed there. Play yeah, PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4. Yeah, it's on the PlayStation Store. Um, so come check it out. But I know what you want to know, Jim. I know what you want to know. You want to know price it, mate. I can't see it being too much. I can't either, but I've been stumped before. I'm, I, I don't look before. I, um, oh, I mean... Well, tell a lie. That's more expensive than I thought it was going to be. Yeah, me too. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Um, but it's not <coughs> horrific. Um, there's one here bid in £28, but buy it now is 50 complete in box. Um, again, you can't play it on PS5 or PS4. Which is the more current hardware? Um, I'm sure you could dig out the PC version somewhere. Um, let me see if there is. Let me see if it's. I don't think it's on Steam. To be fair, but I can't imagine it being on Steam. To be honest, do you know what I mean? How much I love it being on Steam. Jam. But some bad news. What? It's not on Steam. The PC version is not on Steam. Do you mean? Um, maybe one day we'll get a. <laughs> A new one. I can dream anyway, but um yeah. Future Cop, Dawson. Love for that game, by the way. I do as well. Um that's a hundred <coughs> Watch out for the Twitter thread of a hundred forgotten gems. But well, because we're all ready, mate. We're all we're all for it. Um Future Cop L A P D. Um but jam. That's all we've got time for today, mate. Indeed. I appreciate you joining me today. I've had a great time. Of NS taking the use out of all the words and um, adding them as well. Yeah. But it keeps the U in cheeseburger. It does. It's good cheese burger. burger. <laughs> mm. Um Yeah, everybody, watch everyone in the chat, NS, give out those that chill and don't say anything, thank you so much. Um that was on YouTube. If you made it this far, I appreciate it very much. Um, don't forget like, subscribe, tell everyone how good your future cop is because it's just the bomb. Jam, what are you up to this weekend? Oh, buzzing. Two days time. I get a week off work. That's... And it'd be my first week off work in five um, months. Sore a week as well. That's lined up perfectly, mate. Hang on, what date? What? 19th? Mm -hmm. Tuesday. That's... 
Oh yeah, I'm off from Sunday. We yeah. have some sore mania next week. Sore mania indeed. Are you off for a week? Yeah, Sunday to Sunday. I'm actually off for eight days. Oh, buzzing, mate. And yeah, Skibbo, I'm down for that. No, yeah, mate, I'm in. Stream it so I can watch it. Um, I'm working Saturday, by the way. Oh, no one cares. I'm, I'm not even getting the violin out to play. Get the violin out. I'm fuming. Um, but yeah, like I said, everybody. We'll see you next Tuesday. We'll be back Tuesday, Jim. Yeah. We'll be celebrating Sora and Smash. As long as uh, Steph is in. You, uh, I'll have a word with her, mate. Don't you worry. Um, I, I can always try on my tablet if she has to. It worked last time, didn't it? I think you've done it before. I, I did when we first moved in, but it was, uh, remember, like a slideshow. Yeah. And I was breaking in and out. I mean, if you really but, want to come on, we, we could just have you. They put a nice picture up of you and just have your, your voice mate. Yeah, yeah, I'll get I'll, um, some, I'll, I'll figure it out. We will we will work around it. Um I hope Rob Rob back on Tuesday as well. Um I've got a music quiz in the pipeline, but I'm gonna save it for when Yeah, when, when Rob's when back. Both here. Um But yeah, like I said, everybody, thank you so much. Keep it casual. We'll see you Tuesday. Goodbye. Bye. Buzzing. Bye.